Um, so I live in Spain. I'm a co-founder of Lightyear, which is an integration platform. Um, and this is all written in code. So uh, the, one of the things I got into is, of course, having uh, OpenAI on the platform. So writing code using the OpenAI API. And then the other part would be like as a designer using um, AI to kind of like collaborate or get some initial ideas to to create the final design, for instance. Cool, yeah. Um, and then just to clarify for everybody out there, if you want to go check it out um, while you're watching this, it's runlightyear.com. So is it just you working on the project? Do you have a team? What's no. your team look like? How, built, how big um, is it? How did you get them together? All that stuff. <laughs> It's still early stage. I, I co-founded this with Eric. Eric is uh, the real engineer behind all this. I can code, but not at the, at the same level. Um, and then we have like a couple of contractors um, for like testing and, and quality. So it's like, it's very early stage. We're actually going like, like today is like the first day people can like sign up without going through a wait list. So that's kind of the stage where we're at. Got a couple of people using it got some good feedback and now we're like opening it up for uh, everyone else. Very nice. So can you just tell us a little bit like for the layman, what is the project and how does it work? Okay. So basically what we have created is like, there are a lot of like no code tools out there where you can tie together different services like Slack or OpenAI or Google Sheets. And what we realize is that you can do a lot of stuff with uh, with this like through code if you like can program or have some experience sometimes code might be like a lot easier and more powerful to do it so that's kind of what sort of the main idea behind it is and then what we found is like with the whole ai revolution if you will um it's all like based on text or code so it's actually has become like a pretty big uh, benefit to us also in like creating the platform very nice. So who are you looking uh, to use this project? Who the audience is? Yeah. Yeah. Who's the target for your project? The target would be people that have experienced programming and have gone through the whole um, sort of painful integration exercise. Either they tried to do something on their own without any tools or they felt somewhat limited by using no code tools. That would, uh, would say it's like sort of the prime uh, candidates to use our platform. And uh, is that kind of where you got the idea too? Are you are you a yeah. uh, coder yourself? Does Someone's... it find frustrations and then say yes, how... yeah, yeah, absolutely. There were like, you know, when you sort of start out with no code, and it and it can work. Like if you do something very simple, you're not technical, it's great. Like you can there are a lot of, lot of things you can do, but sometimes you want to do like more programmery stuff where it's like what is easy in code can be very hard in no code. That was like yeah. part of the frustration for like, okay, this can be so much easier if you can just write six lines of code instead of trying to like piece it together in this like UI or visual builder uh, interface. Yeah. One of the things I just ran into, like for actually for these podcasts and I do some YouTube videos as well is I, um, I get the, I, we have an editor and she gives us the edited video and then I transcribe it and um, get a summary of that video via ChatGPT. And you can do that on Zapier um, or like make.com. But I use Zapier. And uh, just to do that was like uh, like really hard. You have a user, you have a user interface, you think it'd be easy, but right. like so many options to use, so many options to pick, so many things you gotta tweak. Like just doing that three step process is very hard, even though it's supposed to be easier. So I think like Mark's this, uh, Lightyear can is sort of like can help with that if you have a little bit of programming experience. Yeah, and we do like we you you can write code, but we like made it like a lot of easy level, a lot of like sort of um, called like abstracted functions, so like simple things like um, on new Slack message run the following code. Like you don't have to go through the entire Slack um, API design. Like we make it pretty approachable. Is it possible? For someone to use ChatGPT to write the code for them for your tool as well, you think? Well, even better, we use Copilot to write the product or the integrations. Wow. Um, so, um, what we have done, like what we, the basic setup is like we have like uh, automated a lot of things, of course, but we just take the documentation from um, a company you want to integrate with, let's say Slack, we just take all their documentation throw it in a code editor 
and then format it in a certain way where Copilot starts auto completing uh, the integration for us, like the actual code, kind of looking at how we want to do things. So it, it does like all the boring stuff you don't want to do, basically. Uh, and then you still have to make the decisions on what to include and how you want to do this, but it saves like a lot of time and it keeps getting better. We keep getting better and it has become this somewhat automated process. So, but it used to take like super long. We can do like new tools in like one or two days, including like documentation on the website. So that's, I think like it's like the new GPT-4, like it seems to like accelerate for us. So that's like one of the reasons we are all going for God, basically. That's awesome. Cause like some of the, some of your competitors, not really your competitor, cause you, you guys have your own niche, but um, like the big boys make and, and Zapier, they've got like hundreds and thousands of integrations. Like someone had to do all that like integration work yeah. back end. So. Right. And, and it's the same code because you also use code to write it. So it's not like this whole visual UI you have to build, right? There's nothing to design. It's just the same TypeScript or JavaScript uh, we're using. So I think that's, that makes us like a little, little faster. I mean, we don't have the amount of Zapier integrations of like, there's like 5,000, but we'll get there, uh, uh, to like a good amount pretty, pretty fast now. Cool. Yeah. That's good. That's gotta be a gigantic help to have that be written for you. That's awesome. But it's also fun. Like having someone to help you, it's not like another human, but it kind of feels like a collaboration where someone does the suggestions and, and you're like sort of pleasantly surprised, like, oh, you got this like right from the first start, like, okay, uh, it's sort of fun in a way, uh, aside from being sort of faster and it gets it wrong totally sometimes, right? It, it suggests all kinds of nonsense and you're like, okay, but it's it generally, <laughs> generally it has been pretty helpful. Now this Copilot, I haven't used it yet, I, even though I should, is it, um, does it have any kind of personality to it, like at all, or is it just spit out the code and that's it? Well, as I understand it, it also trains on your behavior and it can look into um, like the code directory if you want to. And I think there are like some plugins even, but uh, basically it will like kind of learn from the way you write code and it will, of course, recognize the language you're writing in. Um, so there is, there's like, and I think there's like, there's been like this new version announced for like quite a while. It's kind of hard to tell when they upgrade the product. Like there's not like, I'm not sure on which GPT version I am currently, uh, but it's like improving every, you know, every month or so. Mark, can you tell us a little bit just more about your background? Uh, you said you're overseas. Where did you grow up and, and how did you get uh, integrated okay. into, into AI? Uh, the AI is only like a year old, it feels like, but it feels longer, right? Um, so I'm, I'm Dutch, I grew up in the Netherlands, um, like worked with like sort of a computers early on and my parents weren't like technical at all. I had like a very uh, kind uncle that always helped me get unstuck when I brought the computer. He came over to fix it. So I like to like to try to build things with computers uh, from an early age. And I'm like primarily a designer. so. I, throughout the years, I learned myself how to code in order to like make my own games or apps and uh, just enough to kind of make things like a whole product. Um, so that's what I've been doing like for a very long time, like worked at different startups, started a lot of companies. Some went well, lots of things you never heard from, of course, as these things go, <laughs> as, as this as it works out. Um, and then like four years ago, my wife, with my wife and son, we moved to Spain because we wanted to live a little bit more outdoors, which is quite hard in the Netherlands because there's not a whole lot of nature out there. Plus the climate is better here. Um, so that's what we did. So we got like a house on a nice piece of land, more outdoors um, and uh, getting to enjoy the sun uh, as well. So you said you got to, you, you dabbled in making some games. What were some of the games that you made? I mostly, I mostly try to recreate games like uh, like sort of Breakout or Pong, like the very basic stuff of like a platform game. Um, and they're all like these like, well, they weren't called like no code tools back, back then, but you had like click and play and then multimedia fusion, like some, maybe some people will recognize this, but you can kind of like click together your um, games and like in sort of in a fast way without having to learn all the code. Um, 
and as I get a little further, then I, you know, understand programming a little better. But it was like a nice stepping stone. So mostly like recreating games uh, to teach how that how that whole thing works. And one thing you did, Mark, I remember you had a really cool weather app on the iPhone store. Do you still have that? Yeah. Uh, the old one, no, it's no longer there. You mean okay. well better? I think so, yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. That was the first step. So that's how I really got into programming. Um, so I did this together with my wife. She's an illustrator. Um, and we had this sort of like fun side project idea uh, to create like a weather app together. But I didn't know how to go that well, only from like websites. So I had to learn Swift. Uh, and that's how I really, that's like seven years ago now. That's how I got like more like a program instead of like a, not knowing what I was doing. No, your design works really awesome. Um, is like where do you see? Um, I guess we'll sort of jump around here, but where do you see like design with AI going? You know, you can go on Midjourney and and Dolly three yeah. and create pretty incredible designs right now for things like. Uh, I just actually one of the, you know, like you mentioned, Chat GPTs before the interview um, just came out last week. And I was playing around with one of them yesterday. It was like a logo maker. And I just said yeah. like, it was a robot cupcake, um, robot cupcake company. And it made it this logo and it was a really nice looking logo. Like I was blown away yeah. by how good of a job it did. So what do you think, uh, does that, how is design going to integrate with AI? I think they're like, it depends on who you are. Like if you're like not a designer and you're looking to get like a logo done or an app icon, it can get like, pretty close to something that looks like great or especially like good enough. If you're not kind of like, it's sort of like a side project and you don't have like the budget to spend to hire like a really good designer. So it gets like, it's, it's, it can produce some really cool stuff. Um, and, and then like sort of more as a designer, I think for me, it's mostly a way to kind of kickstart ideas. Like let's say you want to design a logo or like a new app interface, like instead of like searching around for inspiration, which you kind of do anyway, these prompts can give you some like unexpected results, even if they're like a little funny um, sometimes, like they're not like the end product, but they can really uh, bring some new ideas to life. Definitely. One of the, one of the things it seems, the one thing it seems to struggle with that designers do a much better job at is like giving it feedback. Because a lot of times uh, you can go in and give a prompt for something for an image, Say you want to create a thumbnail or something like that it outputs it and there's one little thing you need to tweak and if you don't know how to use photoshop or something like that or even you know canva or figma like yeah. it's so hard to write a prompt to say just tweak this one part or change this one part like firefly has that in adobe but still like it's still you still need a human there to help you in those situations at least from my my experience yeah, and that's why I think it's helpful. Like if you're like a programmer or designer, like I think it's like a, like I'm not afraid of it maybe in five years, but right now uh, not so much because it's like you, like to your point, like you can, you know what to ask for or if the AI writes some code and you can program, you kind of tell if you're going in the wrong or right direction uh, and the same with design. So I think it's like a huge uh, benefit. If you're not a programmer, you try to like create a uh, program from scratch or like a designer, like you, you, you don't know what to look for, right? You don't know what, what is correct code, are these scholars like matching? Uh, but if you do, then it's like a, a really good help. No, one thing I think you do, do need help with a designer, for, designer with is like the experience that you guys have with like contrast, complementary colors, the, the contrasting colors, like what everything, all the little tweaks behind things. Uh, really make a difference in the final outcome of whether it be a website, a logo, or an image you have to edit. So um, yeah. eventually AI will be able to do all that little tweaking for you. But uh, right now, at least, I think a designer is still the way to go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, we're safe for now. For now, though. But what do you think? Like, do you think that's going to change, like, you know, five, ten years from now, where you'll be more of a prompt manager than a designer? Uh, it's, it's a, I have no idea, really. Like, it's so... It's kind of like the internet in the early days, like there's a lot of exciting stuff and and a, a lot of hype as well. Um, it's probably going to like on the short term, like there's all these amazing things, but in the long term, it's probably going to take longer than you would think to get to that, like, like where it's like really dependable. And because now it can be like hit and miss, like it's going to be very hard to get like to the last, let's say five or 10% to make it 
uh, where you can like really replace someone on like a good level. That's that's kind of what I think, but it's it's hard. Like if you want to talk about like last week with the whole open open AI release and and the whole new GPT thing, like I've been impressed. Like this seems to be like a big step forward. I I have this like little side project called Daily Four, which is like a you know, uh, like a to do item um, app, which only allows you to have like four items at any given time to kind of help you focus. Um, and that's been sort of my playground to test AI stuff with. And I made like this uh, productivity coach based on that principle and some other stuff. And it got like really helpful. Like before then, it was like sort of like a cool demo, but I can see how this would actually work. So it seems to be like. Uh, like this last release seems to be like a pretty big step forward. So you made, did you, did you make a productivity coach with the chat GPTs? Yeah. I got a GPT uh, floating around. Uh, yeah. Since yesterday. Do you mind sharing the name of it? Is it public? Yes. It's public. Like it's called daily four. Um, okay. and I'm not sure like right now you need still need like the, the GPT plus subscription to access this, but apparently there's come, there's coming some, some like store or GPT thing you can visit. Um, but it's publicly available and some, some people have been uh, been using it. Yeah, I think I was just I just did a video on this last night is uh, right now you can't go on chat GPT and like search for GPT chat GPTs. Um, yeah, you Google that name, it will come up like Google. Uh, what is it again for uh, daily four daily yeah. four and then just put like yeah. space for GPT after it and it'll probably come up in, in the Google search. Oh, so cool. Yeah. yeah. But like a lot of people are creating GPTs now. Like it's 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 I'm seeing all kinds of interesting things, like uh, being able to learn uh, Spanish, like sort of this, uh, like this tutor kind of setup, uh, and like for programming and like uh, cooking. Like it's 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 fun to see what people are people are creating. Did you see that the humane AI pin that came out last week as well? That I I did not see the presentation. Saw some yeah. stuff on, on on Twitter. Yeah, but it's using OpenAI from what I. Yeah. The cool thing about it was you mentioned translations. Is it would do if you wear this pin, I could speak with someone in uh, that speaks Spanish that doesn't know English and vice versa, and it translates on the fly. So it would translate their Spanish to English on the fly, and then I would respond in English to them, and then it would translate to Spanish back to them. So like in real time. That's just cool. Yeah. Future, pretty cool. I think some things are like on like an like an iPhone app, but if it's like sort of more like sort of almost natural, like you don't have to like sort of your phone for that. It could be pretty cool. Yeah. Yeah. I guess it, it does already exist that technology, but yeah, I see what you're saying. Back to the, uh, the, the heart of everything, the light year. Yeah. Can yeah. You, can you tell us a little bit how you got into the design work for that? Um, I forget if you mentioned or not already, but how did you, you and the co-founder get together and start this project? So my co-founder Eric, we've known each other for seven years. So. The way I got to know him was like he had like a different startup and he needed a designer. So we got to work together and we worked really well. And at some point we said like we should start a company together without like sort of having the idea yet. So we talked that talked about that and then like I think like six months later he pitched me on this like early prototype for the integration uh, software. And I said like well, let's let's build this thing together. So we got co found the company. Um, and we've been building this whole thing um, sort of in secret <laughs> and having some people on like a small list of like a small set of users, like using it and improving it with it. So that's been like uh, over a year now. Um, so that's how I got to design the whole thing because we, we started together. And did you guys know each other from the Netherlands or? No, just like the internet. We did, uh, met, we, we did met in the, in the US uh, some, some years ago, but all through the internet, yeah. So it is a US based company then for the most yeah. part? Or? All right. Yeah, it's US based. Yeah. So, what is the specific problems that you've run into in trying to develop the problem or develop the project, and then how have you overcome those problems? Is there any big stumbling blocks that you've come up come across? Um, like some products you create, like it's okay if they don't work that well, like to sort of like this early early stage thing. But if the integrations don't work and you don't get your Slack notifications, then you're not going to be happy. So. <laughs> It's, I guess, a bit more upfront work to make sure it works reliably, reliably and well. Um, and the other part would maybe getting like enough support for uh, like integrations, you know, trying to, you know, you don't have to match Zapier, but you need like a, a few to make it like uh, versatile and 
and useful for, for people. So um, the way we got around that is like using a thing called custom apps. So you don't need us to add certain services or if like your own API, for instance, something like within your team or company, you can also add it to the platform. So we try to make it um, sort of like you're not blocked by what we are doing. Like if you want to write your own service there, that's like an option. So that's, so that's, that's one way we um, kind of got around that roadblock of like, where do you start with, with integrations. And what are you guys working on right now? What's the current next step? Uh, we just finished the assistant API that we have support. So I think it's rolling out today. Um, so you can, instead of using the GPT, there's also like an API. So if you, if you program, then you can create your own assistant through, uh, our platform. Uh, so that's been like the, um, uh, the, I would say the bigger release for, for this week and then being uh, generally available. So, you know, no more wait list, people can just sign up. Uh, that's been a pretty big week for us. Very cool. So we caught you at a decent time then. <laughs> yeah, very. <laughs> and then uh, we we kind of ask a lot of people this, but um, we like to get everybody's opinion, people who are really immersed in this AI space. So where do you see AI going generally? What's the direction of AI more generally? Some people think it's like AI relationships and characters. And oh, yeah. Some people think it's a doomsday. What, what do you think about this? I've been mostly approaching it from like a work perspective uh, because of like design and, and the whole the whole Lightyear product. So I, I mostly see it as like a enabler or, or like if you think of like, um, if you're like a company, which can be like, you think like a bad scenario, like, but like if you're like new to programming, you're like a junior developer, I, I think it's gonna be a little harder than it used to be because AI can do sort of more mundane tasks. I would say that's may not be the, the most positive thing, uh, or maybe you can learn a lot faster through AI. It's kind of hard to tell, but it's definitely some stuff where it's getting more capable, which can be hard for, for some people. Um, so most like a work, I would say most from like a work perspective, that's kind of how I'm using it. I also have like a six year old who is, is does like like if he has like this wild story idea and and, and does like the, the the visual prompt of like sort of visualizing this you know like uh like the the earth globe can talk and it's like bacon flying around that kind of stuff it is fun to see that you I mean he likes to draw of course and, and kind of support that but like being able to create all these funny funny things uh is is i mean it's it's pretty cool for him yeah one of my favorite parts about ai is just exploring all the different tools so yeah, and I, and I always go to like the fun sections of the tools because I, I think it's pretty interesting. Some things you just never think of. That that's probably my favorite part of it. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's it's I would say it's I'm I'm generally like excited about this. Like this, there's so much cool stuff people are doing. Like seeing now with these old GPTs, but like sort of all these services that people create you did not think of. Um, so I get, I think I need to like look in like sort of more like a personal level, like what can you do? Like maybe when like you make food, like I saw one where you can list like, I have like these six things in the fridge. What can you like cook today? Like that, that is fun. Like, uh, it might be interesting or not. Who knows? I haven't tried it yet. <laughs> yeah, right. I've seen like the, the bartender one where it's like create your own types of drinks and right. you know, kind of type in what you like and it'll give you some brand new recipe about, I mean, that stuff's really interesting, I think. There was a there's an AI girlfriend one, so you can be, <laughs> that's the, the name chat. of GPT, yeah, is AI girlfriend. So I tried it for a, a video I was doing. It said, it was like, well, I can't officially be your girlfriend, but I'll basically do everything a girlfriend would do. I mean, other than certain things, but <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, so the, um, uh, like they had like chat one of the things chat gp chat gpt and open ai are, are doing a lot more is censoring things so it was pretty dumbed down a little bit but um yeah it's fascinating how many how many tools are out there for sure in terms of lightyear can you tell us a little bit about like what the what you see are the best use cases are mark of like someone that wants to use the tool like are there any specific examples that can really maybe help someone's productivity whether it be in their personal life or for business? Uh, well, because it's like, it is it is like built for, for developers. There have been a lot of like workflows for developers. So like connecting 
um, you know, productivity apps with their code like GitHub to to uh, Linear and Slack and being like really specific on how that works. So we've been seeing like um, people going like more beyond standard integrations and they really have like specific requests and how it should work. Um, that's kind of where code for them shines. We also have like the interesting thing where sometimes uh, more basic integrations don't work as expected from other platforms, which I did not really uh, foresee, but that has also been sometimes a reason why people switch um, to large year. So it's, it's, it's mostly like trying to, what would be very hard to express in, express in like an official way where you like have like these building blocks and you're trying to tie them together and have like these weird edge cases that are very hard to capture. That might be a very good reason to um, to use code and use light here. That like has been one of the main things for us. So it's almost like the tool the, the tool itself is the efficiency. It is. Yeah, it feels more natural. Like this whole facial part might be not so natural because the whole, like if you're building software, you're writing stuff, you're writing code all day long, and then you get to the part of integrations and you kind of have to like learn this new tool and it's all facial and it doesn't always work out. And it's, it's for developers, but it's not like you can, if you have a little bit of experience, the code, you guys have very clean code. Like you should be able to catch up to it fairly easily, I would imagine. I, I'm I'm not like a, I don't consider myself to be an engineer. Uh, like I can I can code. I could not create Lightyear uh, on my own. So that's kind of like how I've been seeing it. Like I'm a designer. I've been doing a few apps, and then uh, it's for me very easy to learn Lightyear. I know I'm the co-founder, so I'm pretty biased and deep into the product. But it has been like when there's like like with the assist uh, assistant API like. Playing with that, it, it's uh, very easy to pick up, and we we spend like a good amount of time on documentation. That's what like if you if you think of like being frustrated with other products, like having like outdated, outdated documentation or incomplete or non-working examples, we really try to make a good effort on on making it a whole lot better uh, because I think that's like maybe the biggest uh, thing where you get judged on by other developers. Like if they can't get through the getting started tutorial, it's like unclear or it takes a very long time, you kind of sort of um, have like a very uh, bad impression. Yeah. And sometimes those projects are, are so big that it's hard to like sift through everything that you need to get to. Like their documentation can be so thick, whereas you, you guys are a newer startup. You don't have yeah. as many integrations, but that's can be a benefit in a way, you know? Like yeah, to... it is. Yeah. And then there's like co-pilot. So if you... Uh, if you're using, if you're like a programmer, you're using Copilot, you will see that some of the integration work on Lightyear can be written, written by Copilot. So it kind of goes back and forth, like it's one big sort of Copilot uh, uh, thing where like, it, 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 yeah, it's, it's pretty crazy. Even if you're a, you're not a developer, you don't have hardly any understanding of code, but you're smart enough to like look at, read some documentation. Um, you could, and you don't even know Copilot. You could put the code into ChatGPT, and it will help you as well. So if you if you have familiarity yeah. familiarity with ChatGPT, so you can do use it um, that for code as well. Um, but yeah, it's a it's a cool it's a really cool product. And like if you thanks, yeah, it's, if you have any experience, anyone have like experience with Zapier or Make or something like that, um, and you get frustrated, Lightyear is a great alternative. Um, and Again, if you look at the code, I know like I was giving I gave that example at the beginning of, of this podcast is like I was doing something to summarize podcasts and get a summary from it from it and write and have Chat GPT write a summary for me um, for YouTube for the YouTube description and it's just very very hard in those tools uh, even though it's supposed yeah. to be easy and if you just like maybe give uh, let your try or for something like that or something similar their documentation is very well done. So even if you don't, <clears throat> even if you don't know code, uh, it should be pretty clear on how to use it. Um, that, that was my take at least. Yeah. And we have like quite a few examples for every integration. I think they're like 20 GitHub examples. So if you look at those examples, you have a pretty good idea of how it should work or you get inspired on how to create your own, uh, integration, integration. So it's like, as a designer has always helped me like learning, I try to learn to go to like a book. 
you know, mm -hmm. going through all the functions. And I'm like, I, I just want to make a weather app. Like, how do I make a weather app? Like, just show me an example. And that's kind of how I, how I learn best. And yeah. not for everybody, but like, uh, that's one way uh, to approach this. Make it uh, sort of like you kind of want to have like this thing run run in a few minutes. Like if you try something new and not be to 10 pages of like try uh, documentation. Someone recently I saw said the best way to learn is just try it. And then if you have a question about it, look it up on Google or the documentation. Yeah. Go, you know, play as you go. So, so Mark, um, what's your long-term vision for this project? Where do you see it five years, five years, 10 years down the road? 10 years, so that's a long time. Uh, when it comes to like the integration part, it's it's easier and better done in code. And I think with AI, um, I think it's going to be even easier. Also, like if you're like not that experienced, you, there's so much like um, uh, AI can do for you, like writing a code. Like I imagine like that you can just prompt uh, the integration you want to create and it will like write the code for you. Like that's also fine with me. Like it's, and you can modify it. Like it's, that it will be like the somewhat longer term vision where you have to, if you want to write, write code, you can. If you don't want to write a lot of code, uh, have someone else do, do it for you. Um, so I feel, I feel like that's sort of going for us being able to create a product faster and for other people to use the product also fast, like it seems to go like a very like natural way. Um, yeah, so that's that's kind of how, how we see it. And like in 10 years, I don't know, I hope it will be very successful for us. Do you see a, a world where coding is no longer needed? Uh, unlikely, <laughs> less needed, or like there will be different use cases, like maybe the things we're doing right now will be like automated away, but there might be new challenges or new things to develop or more complex things. So I think some of the maybe like sort of easier or, or basic things will go away uh, to some extent, but probably it's gonna, just going to be a whole lot more code uh, in the future. Is it possible you think Lightyear will come to a point where it will almost be like a chat GPT where, where you can like write a prompt and you say, I want to tie in. Yeah these three products to do it for me? Yes, that that is something. But what we're experimenting, experimenting now is like giving a documentation from some other service we want to integrate with, like read this documentation and write the integration for us using, you know, the structure we have in place or using these examples. That's kind of the first thing we're trying to prove. Um, and if that works, I, I would say the next step is that hey, you have some sort of integrated uh, prompt ability to write large integrations uh, for you. That would be uh, that is something we're experimenting with. Yeah, that'd be that'd be incredible. That would be yeah, if I, I would be amazing. Like, I mean, it's it's kind of like I think it's uh, especially after last week, I feel like a definitely a step close. Like it's it's going to be hard just to give like the GPT like a URL like hey go create this whole thing, but you know it's certain steps and certain parts and we'll be doing that more and more. I mean, just a, a few months ago, you couldn't use like Bing integration or search integration with ChatGPT and you can do that now to ask for real time data. So yeah, and you can have like very specific models for programming or you may do something on your own. Like we're not like a, you know, a primary AI company. So I wouldn't be, you know, wouldn't be the, the best uh, use of time to try to create your own model, but I can see how that's going to be more uh possible like these things are getting smaller and smaller and and uh you may be able to create your own model for your own product for the ai aspect of lightyear I, you guys are clearly aren't it's not your main focus uh, we understand that but but what what aspects of ai um are being used in the product right now in terms of for the end customer like if they want to tie in to chat gpt they can do that it sounds like uh, what, is there anything else they can tie into that will help them with the AI aspect of things? Well, because it's like an integration thing, you can use, you could use something like get all the latest uh, issues from GitHub and summarize it using AI in like a sort of a daily digest and send it on Slack or like in an email. So you're like basically leveraging all these services. Um, so you can use as much AI as you think is is helpful to to the whole business and I will be adding more integrations right now. That's been a bit, a bit more on like the developer side of things, but we have been adding like all the Google tools and there will be like more content stuff. Um, maybe even something for podcasting, like we'll be adding like other areas as well, where 
I mean, I think you mentioned like, I'm not sure if you're already doing this, Ryan, but like generating images for like the blog post or Twitter, like is that like already automated at this point or do you still have like do this? No, I, I really, I, I was doing Twitter posts for a while on my own, like one every day. And that was the one thing I struggled with the most is finding images. And I could not yeah. find an AI tool to do, do that for me that did it well. Um, so is, it sounds like there's something out there that can do that now. I don't know, maybe GPT. Like I, like I, I think it's getting close. I'm not sure if it's like, do you want to have like an automated where it's like completely like independent and it will just do a Twitter and you kind of trust the image. Is that kind of the end goal or? Uh, that would be the ultimate end goal. Yeah. I don't think it's there yet. There's some tools out there. I think it's post wise. It, it, they do that for you, but they're just, it, it seems to. The, the tweets, the end, the end tweet doesn't sound good. You can tell it's generated. Um, the main yeah. thing it struggles with, it, like say if I said, find me five images about um, that humane pin that we talked about, the AI pin, uh, and just yeah. give me some stock photos for that. Like it, it won't do that. Um, or right. I haven't found a that will. So things like that would be a huge help in the, in the future. Um, and then like, I know the, the thumbnails are a lot better. There was a thumb. There's a thumbnail chat GPT, and it did a pretty. I did test it one last night. And it did a pretty, pretty, pretty great job. I was kind of blown away by the result. So everything's getting better very quickly. And that makes it so hard to predict. I, I think it still tr struggles with text. Like if you want to create yes. something that's like letters in it, then it gets like awkward. <laughs> It'll like misspell it or put a letter backwards, and then and then yeah. you love the image, but you want to get rid of Can the text. Use it. Like, oh, yeah. I don't and they have to open Photoshop or something like after right, you're back right. to where you are. Yeah. Yes. Like with everything, uh, Lightyear, all, all these new tools, everything's progressing very quickly. So, uh, and if you want to promote anything, now's the time to do it, Mark. Like we are opening up sort of publicly today. So you can go to runlightyear.com. You can create a free account uh, and have like uh, your first integration on the way pretty fast. The other big thing I would say is like we have a development environment so that's something that runs on your machine it's free there are no limits you can write as many integrations as you want and by the time you're ready you can uh, run it on our platform so like give it a try it doesn't cost you anything with like a lot of cool examples out there and uh, we'll be adding more integrations very soon all one word runlightyear.com check out their project also subscribe to ryan and i's weekday newsletter fry-ai.com you get weekday news the three top stories of the day, along with some cool tools and community interactions. So just thank you so much, Mark, for coming on today. We appreciate having you. you. And uh, we wish you the best of luck.